John Roseboro, last year you hit more home runs than ever before. You hit 18 homers. Uh, do you think you're starting to get the range for the long hits, something that we had expected of you a few seasons ago? Well, yes, Cliff. I think that uh, as the years go by, I'm steadily getting just a little better and a little better, and I feel that uh, my average, and I'm not so concerned about the home run output, but I like that average to keep on climbing a little bit now. You say you're not concerned about the home runs. This has become the era of the long ball. Yeah, but you realize that if you're getting your hits and you're meeting the ball, that the home run always comes when you least expect it. And you figure if you're going to hit close to 300, you're going to get better than your share of home runs anyway. Last year, you had your best since you came up to the majors with the Los Angeles Dodgers. More runs batted in, more homers, more total bases, more doubles, and you caught the 125 games more than ever before. And yet, each year you're getting a little older, and you'll be 29 in May. Now, can you attribute your success last season to anything special, anything new, something that you did different? Well, hitting-wise, I think that uh, Kenny Myers, one of our coaches down here, worked with me considerably during the winter. And I think that was the biggest thing. When you're hitting, everything else seems to fall in line. But when you're out there pressing and trying to get these hits and they're not coming, it, you think about it when you're on defense, and it just messes up your whole game. Uh, John, you just used a baseball term. You said you're pressing. How does that manifest itself? Well, I, I think that it's just something that uh, it's something that's on your mind or you can't concentrate on one thing to the, degree, to the degree that you're supposed to. I mean, take, for example, Young Davis, our third baseman. They put him on third base, and he's one of the best hitters on the ball club. And at the time he was on third base, I guess he was hitting around 330 or something, and he started making errors out there that people got on him. And he this was is Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis, yes. He was more concerned with fielding that position and not making errors than he was with hitting. And his hitting slacked off, and just everything just went kaput at the same time. And um, pressing, you just you think about too many things at one time. Uh, John Roseboro, you in talking just now about Tommy Davis, uh, about the fans, uh, who of course can be kind of rough, you know. Uh, when you're out there on the field, either in the batter's box or when you're catching behind home plate, can you hear the fans? Well, when you're going bad, you can hear them. When you're going good, you're concentrating on that pitcher out in front of you, and they don't bother you too much. But I haven't had the uh, years where I've been going good, so I've been hearing them a lot. And you, you have to hear them. They got some, L.A. is right close to the, the fans are right close to the catcher, and you don't miss too much back there. How about the new ballpark? Uh, how do you feel about that coming into the new Dodger Stadium? Well, that's going to be kind of nice. They've got about a mile to get out there to get me, and I can't hear that far. <laughs> <laughs> Does it really get to a player? Uh, the skin is not that thick. Some players, the real good ball players, it doesn't bother. But the mediocre ball players, you get. It's just me. Take me for instance. Anytime somebody says, I won't take you as a mediocre ball player. Yeah. I'll take you perhaps as a sensitive person. Yeah, but go ahead. Uh, I am. I uh, I hear it, and you feel like you want to go up in the stands and uh, straighten a couple of them out, you know. But you know that you can't do that and still play baseball. So you just have to shrug it off. It's kind of hard. Yes, they can be cruel. Uh, John Roseboro, uh, here's a fellow just referred to himself as being mediocre, and yet, John, you're one of the fastest catchers in baseball history. You're one of the fastest runners. Now, would you like to steal bases more often than you do? Yes, definitely. When I came in the league in 57 or 58, I think the record for catchers is about 15 stolen bases, and I said, well, I want to break that before I leave. But, boy, I've been hitting seven and eight spots, and steadily I've been going down instead of going up. So uh, I have to take more chances and get out of that seven and eight spot in order to steal some bases. Well, uh, you know as well as I do, you know better than I do, because baseball is your business, that uh, there have been catchers who don't bat seven and catchers who've been batting four or five. So maybe you'll get up there. But, John, uh, you were number one uh, last year in both leagues in, in stolen bases with six. As a matter of fact, this is the fourth straight year, I believe, that you uh, were tops in stolen bases. Isn't that right? Yeah, but that's not too much of a distinction when you say that you only stole six bases because... You should luck up and steal six bases. That's not too many. I mean, you can go in and a guy will throw the ball bad six times a year. I mean, if you try 12 times, possibly six times, the throws are going to be bad, and you might luck up and steal six. But I think anybody should be able to steal 10 or 12 bases, and you don't have to be exceptionally fast to do that. 
Well, yet uh, your teammates have stolen, uh, I think, 10, 12, or 14. I'm speaking of exceptionally fast fellows like uh, Maury Wills and Willie Davis. So uh, are you possibly setting your sights too high? No, I don't think so. I think it's a matter of running. Now, with our club last year, we were more of a defensive club. We didn't have the power that we could get out in front of everybody, so we couldn't run like we really wanted to. But I think if we had a couple of power hitters that give us a couple of runs leads, you see Willie Davis, Tommy Davis, and Junior, and Maury would all be above 20 bases a year, stolen. Junior, of course, is Junior Gilliam. Yeah, Jim. Mm -hmm. he, uh, Jim's always up there with his stolen bases, but with the team we had last year, we didn't get too far ahead, and we couldn't take too many chances. John, I don't know whether you realize it, but first you refer to Gilliam as Junior, then you refer to him as Jim. Now, uh, I was talking with, uh, with him before and reminded him, since I'm from New York, that when he first came up to the Major Leagues, we called him Junior. And now uh, he prefers uh, that we call him Jim. And I was wondering whether maybe uh, it's that he's reached, uh, I accuse him, not really accuse, I said that he was at his 34th year. And uh, Jim jumped me and said, no, he's only 33. Uh, so he dropped the junior. But last year you were chosen for both All-Star games. You were voted the Rawlings uh, Gold Gloves, the number one defensive catcher in the National League. What more than anything else would you like to accomplish during your career in Major League Baseball? Well, I think I'd like to have a 300 year and um, possibly better my 25 home run output I had in the minors. I think I'd like to get above that. At least I hit 25 in the majors and hit 300. I feel that I can do it, and I, when they get me out, I can't understand it because baseball isn't really that rough. It's just a matter of the batter making mistakes. The pitchers all throw the ball over the plate, so you should be able to hit that thing. And yet baseball uh, has been described as being a game of inches. Maybe it's just that, uh, a little inch to the left or to the right, a higher or lower. Well, you, every time you go up there and you hit the ball and you don't hit it well, you know what you've done. Either you've uppercut a little bit or you got a little bit on top of the ball or you took your eye off the ball. But it's, uh, it's the devil to try to get all those things ironed out at one time and have everything perfect. And uh, I hope I don't uh, acquire this knowledge too late. <laughs> what do you do in your spare time? Well, last season I had a, opened a travel agency in Los Angeles, Gulliver's Travels, and uh, I spent most of my time there. I didn't make any money, but I spent all my time there. You laid the foundation for making money. Right, I hope so. We, I haven't heard a cut last week down here. I haven't got a report on how it's going, but I hope everything's all right out there. Is there anything you'd rather do than play baseball? I always wanted to be a football player, and... Uh, now I look at basketball and I say, I sure wish I was a little taller and had bigger hands so I could have played basketball too. I just, I don't know, anything with sports I think I'd like to do. Football was my one love before this baseball came along. Are you uh, unhappy? No, I'm perfectly happy. I got a good job. I work six months a year and it's not too hard of uh, work, you know, and uh, I could be a lot happier, I'll tell you. Well, the reason I ask you that, John, is uh, here you are, a major leaguer, and this is class, this is distinction, uh, and yet uh, you said that you had the ambition earlier of, uh, of being a football player, which indicated uh, a little frustration. That's why I ask about being unhappy. Even now, you said, yes, you could be happier. What would make you happier? Well, I guess success would make you uh, happier in everything that you wanted to. But you are a successful player, perhaps not to the degree. Well, I don't consider myself a success till I get up to the point where I'm, uh, I have this respectable batting average and uh, say I'm young enough to lead the catchers in fielding and every other department. And to me, unless I'm tops, I'm not quite a success yet in this baseball. Well. Well, with the determination that you have and with the natural talent that you have and with the development that you've enjoyed, certainly has been a, a matter of progression. To you, John Roseborough, I hope you enjoy all this in 1962 and the year is ahead. This is Cliff Evans reporting from Vero Beach, Florida, the spring training camp of the Los Angeles Dodgers.